okay uh, there will be a new topic today but before we do that any questions regarding the PCB fabric uh, Gerber files and the first tutorial no okay and it used to be very basic Arduino applications but I think it's a waste of time for a lot of you guys I don't know what is your Arduino background is um, so you can tell that but still I'm pretty sure there are still a lot of things you haven't learned in the past it was uh, learning but we will do it later uh, instead of exploring the basics at the very beginning so we're going to move forward with the heart rate blood oxygen saturation monitor system design uh, this this project is collaborated with uh, a Purdue University and we received a little grant on that so the goal is to finish that project not on the PCB I find out it's impossible to get a PCB out of it but I think you guys are able to do it now so you know you learn how to make a PCB I'm going to show you what you have learned you probably don't believe that I'm going to open up the schematic of the module and you will find out you understand a lot of things on schematic <laughs> in the past you open up a schematic what are these components but now you know what's happening in there it's very useful um, and if you know what are the schematic, you know how to make the components in Eagle PCB, and you can make a PCB out of it. And you can sell it on your website. You have a website, you don't, but you have a web page on my website, right? So the report for this proposal is going to be a web page that you have to make a you know PayPal link or go a uh, GPay link that people can check it out and pay you. But it can be a dummy link for now. Uh, but as a de deliverable, we have to make it that way um, as a requirement for the for the project. So keep in mind, so this one you have to bear it, bear in mind, like uh, entrepreneurship and um, art and engineering and uh, bio. So four pieces into one project has to have an art piece in there and has to be engineering, which is simple. We are engineers. It's, it's an engineering project, project, right? And you have to have a entrepreneurship uh, mindset. Like we are trying to, if you're trying to start a company or you want to sell this product, how would you like to promote it? So I have certain requirements very clear in this proposal, and for 20 points for that for that task, I'm going to show you pretty uh, quickly. Okay, so this is a module I ordered last year, uh, but I haven't got a chance to use it. And here's a chance to do it, which is really, really nice. And in my analog device uh, class, I'm going to show you that what I did over there really quick. Lab. Oh, that's a long time ago. Okay, this is what I did. So this is an IR sensor. It has an IR emitter and IR receiver. So the emitter uh, emits the infrared light. And if you have something in the front of it, then it's going to reflect the light light back to the, to the uh, receiver. The receiver will have some response to it. So it's being used for the robot car to detect the, the tape on the, on the ground as a line tracker. Um, so this is a sensor that it can, it's very cheap, low cost, you can buy anywhere. And we have a lot, hundreds of them in the, in the lab. Okay, and so this lab in analog, we didn't use it uh, for robot line tracker, but instead we use the IR emitter and receiver for a, a oximeter for a finger. So it's, you can use it to make a very simple pulse uh, detector, to put a finger in there and uh, whenever your heart pumps blood to the fingertip, so more blood, more blood means there there are more oxygen in your, in your blood and or reaches your uh, fingertip, and and oxygen in your um, blood absorb the air light. Okay, so get less. You get just a something. Not all of them, but part of them are absorbed by the oxygen, and part of them again reflected to the receiver. If the heart pumps blood to the fingertip, so you got more blood, more oxygen, so it absorbs more IR light and reflects less. 
So in that case, you can detect the uh, voltages or the light being received by the receiver to determine the um, heart rate because it ha has a voltage differences. And if you build the circuit like this, if you look at here, that's a sensor, right? And these are, so two, these are two resistors, okay, two resistors, and that's a power supply. This is just a, um, a emitter and the receiver. And how, how can I know that? How, how did I know like which one is receiver, which one is emitter? Very quick question. And when you look at the resistance of these two resistors, and you want to tell what are the roles of the two resistors. The 10K resistor is a is a pull up resistor. Okay. And the 560 ohms resistor is a It's just a resistor limit the currents runs through the uh, the, the, the belt or IR LED. It's just based on experience and if you have worked with all the circuits for a long time, you'll know. Every time you see this kind of resistor in the schematic, you know this is a pull up resistor and this is a resistor that limits the current. And you will know that if the resistance of the resistors matter or not. The answer is not. You can have 560, you can have 320, you can have 400, you can have even 1K, up to 1K. It's gonna be fine. Because the role of this resistor is nothing but limiting the current running through the, uh, the little air LED. You know, if just limiting the current, not fry it. You know, if you don't have this li resistor limiting the current, just directly connect the five volts to it, the LED has a very low internal resistance. That's going to run a lot of current through through the LED. It will blow it up. So that's uh, a, a current limit resistor. And for this one, it can have a 10K, have a 20K, 15K, 12K, it doesn't matter. 1K is a bit small, okay? 5K, uh, maybe, but 10K is, is good. So 10K is usually... Uh, a pretty standard resistance for pull-up resistor. So what is a pull-up resistor? Again, okay, so this is circuit one stuff. Something here. If I draw a little power supply, 10K. Five volts. I want to quiz today. Yes, better. <laughs> <laughs> circuit one stuff. Okay, circuit one stuff. I'm pretty sure if I give a circuit that quiz to you know this class, not too many people can make it. It's just a, <laughs> no. It's just a you know blunt time. But I'll show that still really well if I'm telling you this is a this is a pull-up resistor and that's the current limiting resistor and you didn't know that, uh, you should feel a bit nervous about it. You know, prepare it for the interviews, job interviews in the future. It's very fundamental circuit stuff. Okay. So if I draw a circuit like that, what's the voltage here? Five volts compared to where? Five volts. Compared to ground, right? So that's five volts. What's the voltage here? Five times. Where's I? Where's I? There's no current. No current. So Ohm's law, right? If there's a current flow through it, you got a voltage drop, right? That's the Ohm's law. Remember that? What is Ohm's law? Don't don't tell me like I equals V over R or R equals V over I. No, don't tell them, don't say that. Right. Even during the interview, don't, don't tell them that. Don't tell the recruiter that, right? So if they ask, if the recruiter asks you during the interview, what is Ohm's law? You just tell them if there's a resistor, right? If there's a resistor, you run the current through it and you've got a voltage drop. That's it. Okay? Resistor, current, drop of 
voltage. If you flow a current through the resistor, you got a voltage drop. Okay. Is there a current? <laughs> no. So what's the voltage drop across the resistor? So no drop. Five volts is just told me, right? So what's the voltage here? Five volts compared to where? So if you grab a multimeter to probe it, if you probe here, you'll see five volts on the multimeter. To probe here, you are still seeing five volts on the multimeter. Make sense? So I drew a circuit like this. Um, that's a switch. Okay, that's a switch. Five volts. That's a power supply. NK. Okay. What's the voltage here? Before I if I close the switch, five volts, no current, right? Five volts. So that's why this resistor is called pull up resistor. Because it pulls the voltage at this point up to five volts. Make sense? It didn't really pull up something, but it just transfers the voltage here and seems like it pulls this up to five volts. Question is why I'm not using 10 volts instead of 10k to pull it up. No, I didn't close the switch. Oh, what would you do then? That's right. <laughs> if you close it, so it's very similar to just shorting five volts to ground, right? Or shorting the power supply to ground, so it's going to generate a lot of current. Through, uh, the, the, the circuit to the ground uh, and heat it up. So that's why you, you want to pull it up, you want to use this one. So if you close the switch, it's still you know, limiting the current. It's not burning the power supply. That's why it's called pull up resistor. Um, so now you see, switch. One emitter, one receiver, and it has a little plastic piece in the middle to block the, the light, the crosstalk. So you have to have something on the top in order to reflect it to the receiver. Okay, if it receives the light from uh, the reflection, then this. So oh, in that case, you know that this is a pull-up resistor, because if I do not have any reflection uh, to this receiver, the switch is open, okay, and this point is pulled up to 5 volts, okay, so I'm getting a 5 volts output as this node, because switch is open, okay. If it receives light from the reflection and the channel will be open, right? So it's gonna flow current through here. And this point will be will be what? Will be shorted to ground. Will be shorted to ground. Because this one has a pretty low resistance. Yes, it's a voltage divider, but this one is a very low resistance compared to 10K. It's like a short circuit, right? It's very low resistance. So the older voltage drop. Of the entire circuit will be dropped across the 10k resistor instead of the resistance here. It's a very low resistance. So this one is being considered as shorted to the ground and now you receive a ground or zero volts signal. So you're getting either zero or five volts depends on the reflection being received by this uh, transistor. 
Okay, so in that case, um, because the the oxygen in your blood, in the blood of the fingertip, will absorb um, the air light. So it affects the amount of light being reflected to the receiver. That's how you are getting these pulses. And then you just count, um, you can just measure the distance between it's so x axis on the this is on the oscilloscope. So the distance on the x axis will be the um, you know period of your heart rate, heartbeat. In that case, you can measure it. You can either either display it on the oscilloscope or uh, use Arduino to digitize it and show it in a serial plot in Arduino. So this is what you can what you can see. Okay. So you can build an oximeter really quickly in the lab just by using all these amplifiers and filters and um, Arduinos. Okay. So that's the entire circuit. You have to see that it's pretty messy on the breadboard. Um, so we are not doing that. We are not practicing on building amplifiers in this lab. It's not an analog lab. So instead, the digital world or the digital devices have, have made things a lot easier for everyone. So if you look at this chip, that's, that's the IC chip. Okay, so that chip integrates everything you saw on the breadboard and even more, even more than that. That's amazing. So I built everything, I spent like that many hours in the lab and built everything on the breadboard and still not performing really well. Okay, and you can directly just buy this chip on Amazon, maybe $2 a piece or something. And this chip has power okay let's look at the schematic first what we have in this module okay first what is this what is this voltage regulators and why do you need caps so the caps are stabilizing the volt dc voltage output you know they're like filters they're just the low pass filters and you need a, you a lot of times you need a different uh, capacitance in there to filter out different frequencies of the noises, and you know sometimes you have one microfarad, forty seven microfarad, zero point one microfarad, but it can even add more different values to make it more stable. But there's a trade off because it's taking more space and adding more cost to it, right? But usually these will be good enough. Okay, you have two regular voltage regulators, and that's the voltage input. Whatever voltage you have depends on the uh, voltage rating for the input voltage for the regulators. You have to look at it from the data sheet, right? So you know that it accepts probably 5 volts to 9 volts, 5 volts to 12 volts. It doesn't matter. So I have to start from here, start from the power supply. Okay. And you got a 3.3 volts output and also 1.8 volt, um, volt output. Why? Because this chip, the highly integrated, uh, IC chip for the IR receiver, sensor, and digital communication protocols, everything integrated in one chip. So this chip requires that 1.8 volts for some reason. No. At this point, we don't even have to know why they need the 1.8 volts for what. That's okay. <laughs> That's fine. It requires 1.8 volts on the data sheet. Let's just provide it. Make sense? It requires 3.3 volts, let's just provide it. What is this resistor? <laughs> Who? <laughs> <laughs> Who up, right? It's a pull up resistor, 10K. Pull up resistor. Uh, we haven't covered I2C yet, but it's just a very standard library. And um, so I highly recommend you guys, if you're not in the C program, Take 433, you know, so you'll learn the, the timing of I2C in the future. So I2C protocol is being used everywhere. It's just a digital protocol. And you don't have to. So what I used, keep in mind, remember that I just showed you the sensor I did in analog lab. We built everything, even the amplifiers and everything on the breadboard. And I have to digitize the analog, analog output from the amplifier using Arduino ADC. 
analog to digital converter. So I have to use the Arduino chip to digitize it and then show it on my laptop through the serial monitor, through the USB. What a mess. What about this one? So, audible, yeah, audible digital signal. Is that nice? Why do we need a, why do we prefer output digital signal or the output to be a digital signal? It's just one zeros, just one zeros. I don't have to connect the amplifier to it, to amplify it, right? Make it into a certain range. It's just pure digital signal and follow protocol, it's one and zeros. It's very resistant to any kind of noises, like analog, if it's an analog voltage, sine wave with a noise between the voltage level, the level of the only one and zeros, it's just one and zeros. Very resistant to, uh, to any kind of noises. And also, you can use any type of my controller to interface with this chip, instead of, you know, connecting amplifiers and ADCs, right? Have to digitize it and then uh, connect the digitized signal to a, another digital communication protocol like I2C or SPI, you'll learn it later, right? It's directly just the standard I2C port. So it's just, you just need Arduino to connect to the ICL and CA ports and receive the signal uh, to the Arduino and you can do anything you want. You can display it on the little OLED module or LCD module or the serial monitor or anywhere or through Bluetooth to your smartphone, it's ready for you to use. Never worry about amplifiers and filters, ADCs, it's all done by one chip, okay? Now let's look at this one. What are these? Yeah, it's unmost, right? It's unmost. <laughs> What is this? So I just told you that I2C communication port has only two pins or two wires. One is SCL, is a clock, CL, clock, right? Clock. Another one is SDA, is data. So clock and data, just two lines. And I don't have to worry about what are these, these two lines. It's just a digital signals, clock and data. Okay. It follows a certain protocol in the timing diagram, but we don't have to worry about it right now. You just connect it and you can receive data. That's sweet. I just connect it. Just physically connect the wire to the two, two ports, two pins, and data is ready in digital form. I'm going to receive bytes, like eight bits of data for each data point. Okay. So, for example, we have uh, a Arduino board shorted to these two uh, I2C ports. Okay. <clears throat> and this one, this chip, is this chip outputting data or inputting data? Receiving or, you know, sending data? So what is this, what, what is this chip used for? It measures the uh, reflection of the air light from your fingertip, right? So send, it shoots a air light and and your uh, oxygen absorbs some of them and getting reflected to the receiver, and the receiver is going to output a voltage. So this chip is actually outputting a voltage for the outside world. Okay, so sending something out. Okay, so this sensor senses the data and sends it out. And now you need Arduino to receive it. it can be Arduino, it can be something else, it doesn't matter. Okay? You need to receive it and display it on the OLED display module or the serial monitor. So you can see it, you know what are the data. So Arduino will be connected here. So data will be sent from this one to the Arduino. Make sense? So why do you need a transistor in the middle to the job? What's the role of the transistor here? Now let's look at the first resistor first, R3. Got a 10K resistor for R3, so what is that resistor? Pull up resistor, okay? And what is this resistor, 10K again? Pull up. So why do we need to pull up resistors here? 
just keep in mind, I2C protocol or I2C ports, they require, they require that flop resistor in there. Just put it there. It requ requires <laughs> a flop resistor for the I2C protocol. Let's just do it. So we got I2C here for the Arduino, I2C here for the chip. So they're both I2C ports. So we need to put it up to their power supply. But if you have different power or voltages being supplied to the two sides, and why is that? Now let's look at the BVCC. What is a BVCC? What is BVCC? It's 3.3 volts. So that's the power supply for this chip. So this chip requires a 3.3 volts power supply, and which means that's the highest voltage for the chip, and they are going to output the digital logic or digital circuits at a 3.3 volts level. So logic one for this chip means 3.3 volts. That's one. Okay. Logic zero for this chip is ground. Digital circuits, ground is always zero volts. So ground is zero volts and um, zero point zero volts is logic one. However, your Arduino is five volts logic. And if you are sending and receive or you are sending five volts, five volts uh, logic, uh, you know, pulses, we use this zero point zero volts chip, there's a chance that you can, you can damage it. That's a zero point zero volts chip. Probably five volts is too too big for for it. Okay, it's gonna damage the transistors inside the chip. So that's why you need a level shifter. This transistor is working as a level shifter. And why is that? Because you want to turn it on the gate using a three point three volt voltage. So there's there's no way that you can pass a five volts to this point. But you, it's okay if you haven't taken digital or analog yet. You don't know how it works, how the almost transistor works. But now. Just so want to let you guys know this is a level shifter. Level shifter. It transfers the five volts logic. So now we know how to use the module, right? Just make the connections, follow the tutorials. So first, here's a reference, which is, you know, I didn't plan on doing this that early in the semester. We haven't done any Arduino projects yet, but because we have to make that March 6th deadline, so which means we have to finish this project and get a paper out of it. I'm not just relying on you guys to write a paper. I will work on it as well. Um, but we do have a deadline on March the 6th, I guess. And we still have a lot of time to work on it. It's very doable. I've, I, I never assign a reasonable task to students. It's very doable and will be a really fun project. So this is uh, one, of the pro one of the tutorials I found online. 
I just found it. it's not making sense. Like I just duplicate everything and put it on my website. It's right there. And uh, it provides the code and the hardware connections to it, but I haven't done it yet. So for all the other tutorials um, in this course, like for example, these ones, I just did it and then I show all the all the steps in the tutorial and show you all the uh, expected results. But for this one, it's a little bit different since I haven't done it yet. <laughs> It can be a little bit challenging, but the good news is this module is super popular. If you Google it and just Google this one with Arduinos, you can find like thousands of tutorials online, which means it's super repeatable and reliable, it works really well. And if you told me like you couldn't make it work, I won't believe that because you can see hundreds of thousands of tutorials online and YouTube videos that they are making it work. It's gonna work, right? It's not basic science, fundamental science. It's gonna work. And let me show you some of the expected results. Okay. And if you look at hardware connection, super simple, super simple. And yeah. shows the principle of uh, how the uh, spikes are being displayed and detected by the sensor. Uh, that's a fingertip, that's a blood, right? And this is the blood vessel and the IR light emits light to it and it absorbs a part of the IR light and being reflected to the receiver photo detector. And, but you don't need to worry about that. It's not an analog lab, you have to build the amplifiers. And just put your finger on it and just directly use I2C protocol received from Arduino. That's why I think it's doable at the very early time of the semester. And see that these, um, whenever a lot of hemoglobin, right? So these ones uh, absorbs the air light so we got less of them being reflected. So that's why you are receiving a low voltage, a dip. So you can just detect the distance between these uh, two peaks to figure out the heart, uh, heart rate from the finger t uh, fingertip uh, the pulse output. And the way to calculate, so that you can detect heart rate from this sensor but also you can detect how much oxygen is being absorbed by your uh, blood vessel. And that's one of the very critical parameters being monitored in the hospital, especially during COVID, when people's lungs are not working, functioning really well, they are not able to, um, you know, uh, taking a lot, enough amount of oxygen by their lung. Uh, so their vessel, the blood vessel is not um, sending that much oxygen to the fingertip. So they can detect the, the, the concentration of the uh, blood in the fingertip to, to figure out if your lung, lungs is working uh, really well. So the parameter is called uh, oxygen saturation level or SpO2. It's being calculated by the red light and air light, the two different wavelengths the absorb, uh, being absorbed by the blood vessel, and there's a ratio of it. Um, I don't think you have to calculate the ratio by yourself because the data has been processed and already stored in the bytes automatically in the digital domain. So you directly find out that byte and send it, receive it through our I2C and just show display it in our, you know, it's very simple. You don't even need to calculate it. So if you look at the that's a hardware connection. You can do it in one minute. Okay. So let's see the expected results. You got a red light, you got air light, so two different wavelengths for two different readings. That's a, uh, one of the tasks you are going to do. And I think one of them is red, one of them is IR, two different wavelengths, and uh, showing the absorb or the reflection intensity in Arduino zero plot. <clears throat> and we're not doing this, just skip it. Reading temperature, not doing that, just <laughs> additional function in there. Uh, measuring heart rate, this is one of the tasks we're going to work on. <clears throat> 
So you can see that the heart rate is being displayed in the serial monitor. And SpO2, the oxygen saturation level, which is very important um, clinical you know, parameter being uh, monitored uh, in the hospital. They are looking, the nurse, nurses and doctors are looking at it um, you know, in real time in the emergency room. And I don't think you need to do the calculations. I think the library, the Sparfun library will directly calculate it for you guys. You don't have to modify it, just copy and paste, right? Just make it work. So it shows all the numbers here. So this is the first task, 20 points, to finish this, this tutorial. And I copy and pasted some of the figures here, the main ones, uh, to make a clean version of it. And you can see task one, 20 points, is due next Wednesday by 8 a.m. Um, and you need to finish, you know, just hardware connection and copy and paste the code into Arduino and make it work and show these numbers in your serial monitor and show the plot and show the heartbeat rate, put your finger on it and show the SPO2. And show whatever I put in here, duplicate it. Very simple. If you're lucky, see, I haven't done that yet, but if you're lucky, I think you can get it done in, in one day, I guess. I don't know. Try it. Task two is also due next week on Wednesday, same time, uh, because everything has been provided. So I'm not giving you one week, one more week to work on it because it's just a copy and paste. Okay, just play with it to to be familiar with uh, uh, the code or the you know the port being used, the functions being used for this uh, little application, and you can either use a Arduino Nano. Or you can use the Arduino Uno board, it doesn't matter. I have both. Uh, they output the same voltage, 5 volts logic. And if you use the Arduino Nano, you have to be aware of that. You have to write a bootloader circuit. So Connor is, a, is an expert on it. So last summer he worked on that with a PCB board. And and you know, if you have any questions regarding that, you can ask Connor. Um, you know, please help, you know. You, you can you can you can sell your little piece to them. I have to buy a five dollar for each piece. <laughs> so you can directly run the bull order uh, to that Arduino Nano board, so you can use it. And I have I have many of these OLED displays in the lab, and that's the sensor I'm gonna give give it to you after this class. And so just make the connection on the breadboard, and show the numbers. Just duplicate whatever this guy did in the tutorial. It's a YouTube tutorial, but I think there are GitHub links uh, to the code. Uh, so directly duplicate whatever he did. So it's a rather prototype of product. It's not a PCB version yet, but you can see it works. <laughs> you can put it in the hospital or, you know, start functioning. And task three can be a little bit challenging because we don't have an exact example for this display. I saw a different project online uses a longer display. I think you can refer to that example as well. Uh, but I put one of the examples I found online here uh, that the goal is to show not just the numbers, but also a real-time plot of the pulses. Okay, it's gonna be a little GUI shows all the spikes. Like the ECG signal shows in the hospital monitor detecting the heart rate, the heartbeats. This is a, a pulse symmetry instead of uh, ECG. You can make it, you can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw some of the tutorials, they did it. They did a like beep, beep. <laughs> can be a bit annoying if you do it in the lab, right? You're showing off my function is beeping, but other people are still struggling, like how it works. Be aware of that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and task three is due uh, uh, two weeks from now, Wednesday, two weeks from now, and uh, two weeks from now, but two more days uh, from that Wednesday, it's Friday of that week, just after, two days after that, uh, there's another task due here. I'm going to explain this really quick. This is required by the grant, by the project, okay? Because when you are designing this one, yes, you have to make it work. 
uh, but the goal, or my goal, was to uh, create a kit so I can put all the parts in the box and sell it to high schoolers who want to participate in the workshop uh, being hosted in the, in the college. So for example, in the summer camp, I just send out the, the, the flyers to the high school teachers and I'm going to recruit 20 students for a one day workshop. So three hours in the morning, three hours in the afternoon, for example. Usually, you don't want to make it super long. The high schoolers are probably, they want to go out and, and camp during the summer with their parents. But um, one day workshop makes sense. You know, if you make it like five days, they probably won't be able to attend. And one day workshop, and $50 for each, you have to pay $50 to me, and I have to calculate, put all the parts. So we, have, we are not doing PCB yet, right? For example, you are just making, building a, comp, building a prototype like this. And how much is the Arduino Nano? If you buy 20 from Amazon, how much for each? And how much is the breadboard? And how much is the OLED? How much is the sensor? And you have to plan for giving this out to the students after workshop, because they just love it, it works. I just want to take it home. If you told them, no, I have to keep it here, I said they're too stingy. Just give it to them. So you plan on giving out all the parts to them after finish it, right? So put everything in the in the uh, bill of materials, okay, file spreadsheet, and have the parts on the left hand side and for one column and the cost for each for another column, and have a subtotal of the entire uh, system. How much it costs for all the kits, all the parts in the, in the kit, and including the industrial design of the box. The box is cheap. I have to, you can probably just buy boxes online and uh, and put the parts in the box so you can sell them like a product. So how much for the entire kit? You can hand hand it to the, the students in the workshop. You have to think about that. And then, um, how long is the workshop gonna be? like three hours, six hours for one day, two days. And um, how much profit you're you are getting for each uh, student. If you're recruiting 20 students for one day workshop, how much you can earn from that day. If you can get like $20 of profit for each student, you're getting, you're getting 20 students, so which means you can earn 400 bucks for that day for the workshop. It's good. And um, design the flyer, that's the art piece of it. Design the flyer of it to attract the participants. And the drawing and art on the flyer must be original work. You couldn't just copy and paste. Okay. Design the white page to include the dummy PayPal option uh, for, to check out for the customers. Okay. So they don't have to pay with cash. You have to give them the changes. Okay. It's just check online. I'm not handling all the caches. <laughs> okay. And also somewhere else, some people from you know other states in the country that are not able to attend the workshop, but they watch your videos, they still can check out from the website, they can make more money from it. And there's a tutorial for PayPal app to be added to the website. You have been working on the home HTML, right? So I understand how to insert HTML a little bit. And now go through this tutorial and just embed that HTML code into the website. You'll you see a little PayPal app on your web page, so people can check it out. It doesn't have to be functioning. You just you can make put a dummy um, PayPal app in there for now, okay? Uh, and it can do GPay, whatever you think is more re reasonable. So this part of the project uh, takes 30 points. It's pretty significant. Uh, make sure you can you can make it work. And here's an example of the product that I that I know has been successful, and you know, it's like a thousand dollar, a thousand uh, usual, you know, it's pretty expensive. Um, yeah, for my PhD. So this guy, so uh, that was probably from six years ago. So this guy found out that um, they can make a pretty portable high voltage uh, switch for each electrode. And because I published a paper in the conference and he found my paper and referred to my paper and gave me a, a shout out on, on his YouTube tutorial uh, for the first, very first version of it. And that's why I found out this uh, this website because he he cited my paper. And then he built the first version and then the second version and until the fourth version. 
It's being used in a lot of places, it's really fun to, to watch and to operate. So this has all the high voltage electrode which can move the droplets around uh, on, the, on, the, on the surface of the PCB board. And you can see a lot of people uh, have been using it for a lot of uh, biological experiments. Um, and he is a very good, very good at hands-on projects. And this is just a, one of the flagship um, product in, in his, uh, his lab. It's, it's been very successful. He's been selling this to uh, all different places. And you can see they have all different options here. You can just check out uh, maybe just as a frame or the uh, droplets to be used on the platform or just parts of it if you don't want to buy the entire system. Okay. I want to do the same thing. So since we have a lot of uh, products developed by the students, including the horseshoes project or the uh, sensor network project, I've developed for the different companies or the air cleaner, you know, so many different things you are going to work on uh, in the semester, later, later this semester. So in the future, if I start a company, I'm going to just post all the products to the website as well. So I'll have to, you know, make my website you know, looks more more than <laughs> <it's gonna laughs> static page. So it's going to be a, like, I'll put a huge button here, like donate. <laughs> anyway, any questions for this project? Okay. Um, we probably don't have time today. If you are, if you have time uh, after this class, you can stay. I'm going to hand uh, all the boxes and kits to you guys. The Arduino kits and sensors. Uh, if you don't have time, you have to go to another class. You know, feel free to, to leave right now, and we can. Um, I can give it to you later today. No problem.